good morning, a little brisk these mornings, and uh, without I don't every morning, but most mornings, I look at my uh, my phone and my uh, weather app. Uh, have certain cities, and I can just see at a quick glance their high and low temperature if it's snowing or whatever. And, and um, for all the liberalism and mess in California, we got great weather, even on these cold mornings or when the wind is blowing. It's a it's a great thing. Um, I'm gonna be in several different places in the Bible today. Before I get there, um, I'm not going to read any great history of great Christians or a story of some tough survivalist. I'm, I'm just going to reflect on on um, kind of an unusual song that some of you, uh, uh, from when, when I was a kid, um, there's a TV series, whatever you'd want to call it, you'd call it a sitcom, I guess now. But um, Green Acres is this silly old show from I don't know how far back. But um, they had a song at the beginning of, uh, of each show. And some of you that are older right now, you could probably hum it in your mind. But uh, the thing that's interesting is the song, he sings a verse, she sings a verse, or, you know, recites words, not really singing. But uh, at one point he says, you are my wife. And then she answers, goodbye, city life. And um, she's talking about New York is where I'd rather be. And and um, he says, farm living was the place for me. And they go, they, they go back and forth. But um, what a strange thing that just a few years ago, it was a mainstream TV show, a funny one, a sitcom, but it was very popular. And, and anybody, I'm going to say 50 years old and older, knows it. It was that popular. It was all over TV. And, um, and yet... The very theme song said, this husband made a decision to leave the city, to leave New York, to leave a prosperous job, and it was a horrible decision. He moved to this farm. He didn't know anything about farming, and he bought this worthless farm and couldn't make it produce. But And, and she was not a farm wife. She knew nothing about where she would vacuum with the vacuum unplugged because it made too much noise. Uh, she knew nothing about being a housewife. She was used to maids and people taking care of her. Neither one of them were, were suited for it. But, you know, she followed him. What a concept that in America, just in the last, I don't know what year it was, but um, I'm going to say in the last 50 years, there was a mainstream show that was on regularly that it, it, it pronounced this very together lady in her world, as a woman who would follow her husband out of her comfort zone to an unsuccessful life, to a difficult life. And again, it was all humor. But um, you know what? If I got a job, if I left, you know, my brother, he had a great job with, um, I want to say it, was, it used to be Hughes, and I don't know if it was McDonald, Douglas, things changed, but in the, in the, ex the aircraft uh, development, I don't know what world you'd call it. He worked in the Apache helicopter basically his whole career and the longbow, the follow-up on it. And um, refer military defense, but it was a, sec a, a civilian job, but doing military development. But um, when he left there, he, he, he retired. He, he moved out of the desert of Phoenix and up into the mountains where it was nice weather. And he had a couple different jobs and he got settled in at Lowe's. And... Um, and I've never asked, he's never commented on who his boss was, his manager or whatever it might be. But, you know, if I was to get a job at uh, Lowe's or grocery store, or wherever, whoever my boss is, is the boss. Somebody up the leadership command said, this is the person who's the manager. This is the shift manager or whatever it might be. However, the, you know, the different leadership, that's not a problem. That's their job. What my job is, if I'm under them, to do it the way they say it until they violate company policy or until they violate moral policy, God's policy. I'm not going to break uh, the, the law and I'm not going to offend the commands of God to please some earthly authority. And no one should. No one with any sense believes those kind of things. Um, we teach our young people in our church all the time. Heroes like Daniel, who did right, honored the Babylonian king far from his home of Israel until the king crossed 
the commands of God and then no way. And as a teenager, he took his stand and every young, every boy and girl knows the songs about Daniel and verses and stories, dare to be a Daniel who stood up against um, the authority. And that's the most common thing. Those are the, those are the stories every, every child from a, a a Bible-based background knows um, there are leaders, um, but the but the point is, what's happened in America is we've lost truth. See, in John chapter seventeen, and I could spend a lot of time. Our our, our theme this year is for the truth's sake, uh, with January being focused on missions and February focused on um, I love my church. We we really have not quite kicked off our theme yet but it's on some of our church letterhead and different things. So it's creeping out into the open. But our theme for the year is for the truth's sake. We do what we do for the truth's sake because we have the truth. You like Fords, I like Chevys. That's not a matter of truth or error or right or wrong. I like chocolate and uh, you don't. Somebody the other day said that they're, whoever it was in their family, the mom or the dad doesn't like chocolate. I can't even imagine not liking chocolate. Just can't even fathom that. But um, we, those are opinions. But truth never changes. H2O is water. And that doesn't change. Gravity pulls things down. Something falling through the atmosphere, basically unimpeded, falls at 32 feet per second per second. It's squared every second. So it's accelerating. Those are those are facts. You know, you can't undo those things. And those are truth. And so in John 17, 17, Jesus says, sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. Sanctify means set something apart. So you are set apart from the lies of this world by the truth of the Bible. You're set apart from this foolish, uh, this foolish world, the world of absolute ridiculous ideas about home and money and business and and nation national you know the running of a nation governments um these we're set apart from this folly where are we in america what a ridiculous ridiculous world we find ourselves in here in america what absurd leadership we have what backwards and and just blasphemous to the constitution and the bill of rights type of of leadership and laws that are being made somebody makes a law you can't have gas stoves anymore where in the world do they think they got that authority the rights the the powers of the government are limited and they're only the only powers they have are given at the at the permission of the people when the people dole out certain um, uh, uh, privileges to the government. We will let you oversee national defense. We'll let you oversee the post office. We'll let you oversee interstate roads or whatever it might be. And when the people give these things away, we never gave anybody the right to tell us how big a Coke we can have. And that knucklehead in New York making laws of how big a, a, a Coke or soda, you know, depending on what part of the country you're from, you could, you could drink. What, a, what craziness. But see, when you lose truth, now you lose all good sense. It's just crazy. And, and in the political world, in the legal world, in the world of civil government, we have lost truth. And the reason our Constitution and our, and our Bill of Rights have lasted and literally blossomed with time because as, as mankind in America followed the Constitution and followed the Bill of Rights, those freedoms mushroomed. They developed because it took a while because you've got to get a truth into the head and into the heart and get it out into the life. And so just because we had a Bill of Rights, just because we had a Constitution, doesn't mean everybody embraced it. So it took time to, to, to bring these things into fruition but these were the basic tenets upon which uh, our nation was built, the, the founding documents. Well, these are the founding documents that God set up for mankind, period, specifically for Israel in the Old Testament, and then the, the New Testament for the, the Christian world. And, and, and then, there's, of course, there's a lot of Bible that's about the tribulation time and, and uh, the kingdom age after the tribulation and the eternal kingdom. 
And those, there's, there's plenty of Bible verses that apply to those things that, that get everybody all confused because you try to put a tribulation verse in, into a Old Testament or a, uh, under the Pauline epistle writings and try and merge those things and get all confused. Um, but, but truth, it's, it's so vital. And just basic truths. And there are so many things that, that America knew and, and I can't speak for the rest of the world, but I'm thinking most logically thinking people do know. Uh, I don't remember who the guy was, but somebody went around the, the world with his video team asking people, what's a woman? And uh, I just saw just a few seconds, but somebody mentioned that, he, that it, it was pretty extended and he went on in a lot of different cultures. And uh, what a stupid question. What a ridiculous thing that someone would even ask a question like that. But what happens when you, when you remove the truth and you just start doing things on your feelings and you start doing things in what you think is right and wrong and what you deserve, and, and you can start justifying every kind of horrific thing imaginable. And we as the people of God, and let's bring it down off politics, let's bring it down to us. It's so important that we understand that what we do is because of this. I, I know over the years I've had people get offended um, because of something I said. And, and I'm the first one to admit, uh, you talk as much as I do, preach as much as I do. Sometimes, you know, seven, eight times a week I'm speaking. Sometimes 20 times a week I'm speaking. And you talk as much as me. I'm reminded of the proverb that Solomon wrote, a fool is known by the multitude of his words. You can't talk as much as I talk and not say something stupid or in a way that hurts someone's feelings or maybe is not quite as uh, carefully articulated as we might like it. You know, if I spoke once a week, I could have every illustration perfect. Well, still it would be me. So it's not going to be perfect, but better. Um, but I, I don't. And uh, so all these windows are open and windows of, for error. Um, and uh, I remember hearing our pastor one day say, don't tell me you can't lose your salvation. Of course you can lose your salvation. <laughs> but he didn't believe that. He just got off somewhere in his sermon. He got the, got the words flipped around. And, uh, but, but see, with truth, we, we have to have this as our truth. Now, someone came to me some time ago and said, what, what is this verse talking about? And I explained it to him. Um, I would never have brought it up to them. They just asked and I, and I explained it. Well, that bothered them because they thought I looked down on them. Somebody comes to me and says, tell me what's wrong with, okay, let's, how about this, with uh, long hair. I had, when I first got saved, I was actually um, helping in a Sunday school department in our church in Northern California. I had pretty long hair. But I went to the youth director and I said, show me. And he showed me 1 Corinthians 11 where it says it's a shame for a man to have long hair and talked about it. And, but you know what? I knew this. He didn't dislike me because of that. He was just explaining the Bible and I needed to make a decision. Was I going to keep my long hair or not? It was between me and God, not me and him. He and I were, we were friends. We cared about each other. My personal life uh, was between me and God. And that's how I feel. I can preach against liquor and I know there's people in our church drink casually once in a while. I would be willing to guess there's at least somebody in our church that's got a problem with liquor, that they're struggling with it. I bet there might. I'm not sure. There could be someone in our church. They're not struggling with liquor. They like it, and they're not going to change. You know what? That's between them and God. That's vertical, not horizontal. And that doesn't mean I don't care about them. And, but I'm not going to quit preaching. See, my job is to preach the truth of the Word of God. My job is to take the word of God, the truth of the word of God, and to simply bring it to the people of God. And so when the apostle Paul is writing to Timothy, he makes, he makes things very clear. And I'm over in 2 Timothy chapter 4. And he said, preach in chapter 4, verse 2. He says, preach the word, be instant in season and out of season, in season, out of season. Then he gives some definitions, reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. The long suffering means you ought to keep preaching. You ought to keep reproving, rebuking, and exhorting and be patient, have long suffering. Don't, don't get mad at people about it, but keep preaching it. And so here's the truth and the truth of the word of God on the home, going back to the green acres. Well, people are going to panic. Some people probably shut this off as soon as they heard me mention 
um, uh, who I don't even know these people's names. She was a Gabor girl, but I don't know their names on the show. Um, too long ago, and, and I don't know that we watched it that much. But um, the idea that I would say this lady um, chose or against her will or whatever, but the, the role of the movie was that she would follow her husband. That's biblical. That is, now, she shouldn't follow him to do wrong, but for her to accept his role as leadership, there's nothing wrong with that. Um, in our home, uh, uh, my, my wife said the other day, we were, we were doing a couple's retreat and speaking on marriage, and I have made the comment on several occasions that I can only remember once or twice that I ever said to my wife, this really matters, I want this, other than ketchup on my sandwiches that she doesn't like, but... But she, she didn't mind me having it, but she's not going to put it on hers. But um, I, I mentioned, and, and I try, I, I'm not her Lord, but she said, in, and we were team teaching together, and I, I love, I enjoy being with her, and I enjoy teaching together with her. So as we've gotten older, she's, she's a little more reserved. When she was younger, she'd, she'd jump in and say more. But she's, she's very careful, and um, I like her too, because... We're one. We're, we're that one flesh the Bible talks about. And we do think so much alike. But she said, now he says he doesn't, you know, boss anybody around or insist on having his way. She said, but he's got no problem making his wishes known. Well, I don't mind saying, um, I guess, you know, make it, I guess it's, I guess what I would prefer is known, but I'm not going to put my foot down. And she um, chooses as often as she feels led to follow my wishes. If she doesn't, she doesn't. I don't mind. I'm not mad at her. Uh, she's a human being. She's an adult. I didn't marry an idiot. Uh, she's not my child. She's not my employee. Um, we are in this home as, as one. And she can choose to, you know, follow my wishes um, if she wants to. But if you want to see who, who picked out the furniture in the house, she did. And uh, when it came time, we, we put uh, wood, uh, the laminate, flooring in our downstairs. There's all kinds of wood. Uh, she picked out the colors. For one, I'm pretty colorblind. And for another, I don't care. Um, we're we're going to put, we're going to just, you know, you do one thing at a time, save money, do the next. So we're going to put some carpeting upstairs and um, asked one of the men in our church, he's, he's got wood flooring. I said, so would you do it again? This is before we did the, the bottom, the downstairs. He said, oh yeah, I'd do it again, but I wouldn't do it upstairs. They've got a whole bunch of kids running and and they said, oh, man, those feet, it echoes through the house. Well, we don't have a bunch of kids around all the time, but we do some. But we just thought the carpet would be warmer, you know, getting out of bed barefooted or whatever. Um, but I, I really don't care. Um, I would look at three kinds, ten kinds of carpet. I'd probably pick one I like, but it doesn't matter a lot. But I feel, we always felt like the house is hers. And uh, we kind of feel like the yard is mine. And we, we divide duties, but... If she says, hey, could we do this in some of these flower beds or whatever? I mean, I don't, I don't mind. Yeah, let's do it that way. Um, if I already had a plan, I'd tell her, no, I was going to do this over here, and she wouldn't care. There's a, a warmth and a closeness there. But see, this thing of truth, we need to get over getting this, getting our, you know, like a cat's hair stands up on its, on its back because something doesn't, isn't acceptable. We need to get over that. If God says something isn't right, it's not right. I don't care who somebody is, what somebody is. I remember when I was in college uh, doing missions classes uh, to be a missionary, um, one of the illustrations, the, the teacher had been in Lebanon and then had been in South Africa. And he said, just remember this, when you go to another country, you're not trying to make them Americans. You're trying to make them Christians. And so don't expect them to have an American church it's their culture, but the word of God is the guide. So we're not going to, if the Bible says something's right or something's wrong, I don't care what culture you're in. I remember being in the Philippines and um, I'd only been there a couple of times. And it, it, this was a long time ago. And and a, a pastor asked me to speak on the home. And I said, now, look, I'm, I'm your guest and I'm a long ways from home. And I'm going to honor you as the pastor because that's a biblical principle. That's the truth. The Bible talks about the pastor being the one who's the, the bishop or the overseer of the church. I'm the outsider. I'm not the pastor, and I'm not going to come under his authority and, and, and uh, attack his authority or erode his authority. But he, so I want to always make sure I'm, I'm on the same team um, with the pastor. 
And I said, you want me to talk about the home? I said, um, the Philippines is a lot more matriarchal. Um, you know, the, the, the mom and grandma um, kind of heading the ship than, than maybe I'm, I'm used to. And I said, I want to say anything out of line. He said, you preach the word of God and our culture doesn't matter. And as long as I knew that's what he wanted, and he knew, he knew what I was thinking about. Um, and he was, he was um, I'm pretty sure the man who said that was Filipino, but, it's, it, it, you know, he wasn't an American missionary there. He was a man, that was his home. But um, it's so important that the truth, and again, you'll hear more about this um, probably along the way often, for the truth's sake, we read in First John, we do what we do because of truth. We don't do what we do because, you know, you're Asian and you like rice more and I'm from um, Central America. I mean, not Central America, you know, the Midwest of America and I like mashed potatoes and gravy better. Well, I happen to like both pretty good. Um, I even like gravy on my rice, but my wife makes some curry, chicken curry and gravy. We put that on rice and I guess that's neither Asian nor Midwest, but, but um, this has got to be the base of our truth. And, and uh, we as the people of God need to, need to gear our churches and our homes and our, our business life around the truth. Because as soon as you take truth out of the way, what's going to make our decision? My feelings? Well, my feelings are different than yours. Opinions? Those are different. It's night and day. Someone said opinions are like belly buttons. Everybody's got one. Um, if without the truth, um, I, whether it's right or wrong, my understanding is that in each county or each area, there's a, uni, a universal building code or a, an accepted building code. They have their building codes for that area. And it's, you know, it's probably multiple volumes known in the government of these are the rules for building in this area. Well, the fact this building in Southern California probably has different requirements because of earthquake risk than building in Nebraska. And I don't know that, but I would guess that. But those building, um, those basic building rules, those are the truth for building. Now, they may not always be right, but you got to have something as truth. And so don't don't be offended if if the Bible says something. And, and to me, if the Bible says something and it's not how I was taught, well, then just change. Because the Bible, I'm not going to change the truth. Um, I'm going to change me. And it might be I'm not ready to do that. I'm just not, I'm not sure I can do that. All right, then do it next week or next year or whenever. But just don't deny the truth. And let's be very, let's be very uh, patient with one another. But at the same time, let's, let's make sure we're endorsing the truth. And that is vital. Hope you have a great day. Thanks for taking a few minutes together today.